Hey guys, if you're new here and you like what I'm putting out, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you never miss an upload. Hello there everyone and welcome back to the Power Rangers Dino Fury Episode 7 review, podcast, discussion, easter eggs, whatever you want to call it. Discussion about Power Rangers Dino Fury Episode 7, Stego Search. Now this episode was a lot of fun. We got a brand new Zord and a brand new Zord formation, but overall this episode flew by really quickly, it was over before you knew it, so it was kind of crazy this, that this episode just kind of rushed by and it didn't feel like a 30 minute episode plus commercials, it felt much shorter than that because the plot for this episode moved along very very smoothly. So what's the moral lesson for this week's episode? What's the thing they taught in this episode that wasn't ham-fisted down your throat? Well, this one was very very relatable, like I could relate to this problem that Harvey had in the episode. So the whole lesson is, if you've got a problem going on, even if it's personal, you're always welcome to tell your friends because they're there to help you out with your problems. And don't be a dick about it if something's bothering you. Just be honest, tell people what's bothering you and see if they can help you out because yeah, that's the moral of the lesson. But let's talk about Power Rangers Dino Fury Episode 7, Stego Search. Now this week's episode is a Harvey focused episode which is great, I'm glad we're focusing on this character, he's getting a bit of spotlight, Chance Perez is an amazing actor and I love the performance he brings to the character. So in this episode Chance Perez's character Harvey gets his keytar taken away and yes I will refer back to my old episode summaries, I was tired, I did the summary late at night, I did know what a keytar is. But now I know, thanks to this episode and to the comment section. But he gets his keytar taken away by the park warden because he was disturbing the birds and the bees apparently. So he took it away and I think the warden comes off as a bit of a dick in this episode. Like the warden doesn't have any redeeming factors in this episode. He doesn't learn his lesson. He doesn't forgive Harvey. He just kind of is a dick in this episode. He's like that arsehole father that you get in this episode because when he takes away the key tar the key tar from Harvey he goes oh wow another instrument this one costs nine hundred dollars are you gonna quit this one too like the whistle or the tambourine or whatever instruments he listed and he's not very he's not being very supportive of Harvey's um, musician aspirations. He thinks it's just a silly hobby because he'll play one instrument one month or one week and move on to the other one as Harvey's trying to find his tune, trying to find his voice. So the the Park Warden comes off as a huge dickhead in this episode. And, and excuse my language, I know everyone's going to say Ash is running, running his mouth in this episode, but the Warden does not have any redeeming moments in this episode. Like, there's a scene later on in the episode where Izzy gets hurt, so Harvey takes her to safety, and the park warden just rolls up, and Harvey's like, hey, I, I was saved by the Black Ranger, so I took her to safety, and the warden goes, well, she's still hurt, so you didn't try hard enough, and takes Izzy away to the hospital, and walks off, and... That's the last time you see him in this episode. You don't see him have any redeeming uh, factors in this episode where he gives the key tar back and says, I, I guess you were wrong, wrong son. I, I'm sorry for being so rude to you and stuff like that. No, you don't really get that because everyone at the end of the episode just chips in and gets Harvey a new key tar, which is probably going to get taken away from him in a couple of episodes or eventually if he takes it home to play or something. I'm kind of mixed on the warden. Now in this episode we also see the return of Jane and Jayborg because we didn't see him at all last week and I didn't mention that in my review which was kind of, you kind of miss them when they're not around to be honest because I know not a lot of people like them but I like Jane and Jayborg. I mean they're not too bad. I mean they're fun characters but what's also really cool about Jayborg is she's sporting a brand new haircut where her hair is very short and it's sort of in that bobtail haircut. I don't know what the hairstyle is called, but she's got it cut. It's a lot shorter. It's roughly up to her neck, I want to say, lengthwise, if we're talking hairstyles and stuff like that. But Jay Borg's there. You learn that she can sing or something, but it's not really singing. She just kind of 
hums and haws or me me mo me me mys whatever you want to call it and that's kind of the joke but what i really do enjoy about jay borg and jane is they seem like real people and their jokes and their slapstick is not forced down your throat like previous comedic characters we've gotten in the season they'll show up they'll have a funny moment and that's about it they're not going to have like a minute of screen time or wacky stuff going on and we do get like a wacky J Borg joke at the end but it's at the end and if it's not right in your face it's like a wide shot so they don't close they don't close in on it which is pretty cool as well but I'm glad that they're not focusing on slapstick for like an entire act of the show and when these characters show up they're there for the sake of being there whether they're there to help the plot and further it along I do like that. I do like the characters Jane and Jay Borg. They, they seem very human, especially in the in the environment that they're, they're working in. So I do like that. So we're six minutes into the review. Let's talk about Boom Tower because Boom Tower was the main antagonist in this episode. There was no monster of the week. Uh, the monster of the week or the villain of the week was Boom Tower, which was very interesting. I did like that. I did like that uh, switch around they did. So the reason why they fight Boom Tower is because Boom Tower is sick of Void Knight being in that secret room. And Boom Tower says he's built for destruction. So he rips out some Sporax from the Sporax container and uses it to power himself up so that's really interesting that's a really cool concept which we kind of knew boom tower could do because when he was first invented back in episode four he wanted to use the orb from the museum to power himself up so that little cannon thing in his chest can power himself up so i wonder what else he can stick in there to power himself up maybe we'll find out but if there's one character in the bad guys faction that always steals the show that is mucus i don't know who voices mucus i don't know the voice actress's name but whoever they are they do a really fun performance where they put a lot of high energy into it and i really do dig it so i really do dig that character and the voice work they put into it because it's always a lot of fun it's always a lot of cheerful it definitely suits the mood whenever they're talking on screen because their voice Suit, suits the wacky costume they're using from the Sentai. So I do dig that quite a fair bit. But when Boom Tower was grabbing the Sporax from the Sporax container, Mucus was like, oh, you shouldn't do that. And Boom Tower calls her Fungus Face. And that did not sound like Fungus Face with how that sounded in the recording. It sounded like Fuck Face to me, but that's my hearing. That's what I heard. A lot of people heard it as well when they showed off the preview for Hasbro Fan Fest, but either way, <laughs> I, I love the chemistry between Mucus and whatever character is on screen. Mucus is a riot, and Boom Tower is a cool looking villain. I do dig his design. I'm glad he's sticking around for a little bit longer. So we do see the Stego Zord, but how they summon it was really weird because when Harvey was at the park playing his guitar, somehow the musical notes was awakening the Zord for some reason due to plot convenience. But the way they find out this information is Solon finds a video on the web of when someone was recording the warden taking off the guitar. So that video goes viral, they say, which raises a very important question. While at the base, does Solon just stick around watching YouTube videos all day? Just, she just like watches YouTube and stuff like that. She's got her own little subscription feed. She just scro scrolls through the web trying to find videos to watch. I don't know, that, that's my headcanon. That's my headcanon I'm sticking to it. But yeah, that's also really interesting. So Harvey uses the whistle to summon the Stegozord. And the Stegozord comes out and we get a brand new Zord formation. And a really cool Zord fight at sundown. Which is really nice. And what's also really nice is after the Zord... Because the Sentai footage for the Zord happens at sundown. They do this cutaway where it's sundown. They have a Zord fight. What's really interesting is when the battle is over, they cut back to Buzz Blast and it looks like the sun is setting. So I love that continuity they've got going for it in that establishing shot. They, they stick to it because they could have done another shot and it's like bright as day out there. But no, like the shot they chose, it looks like the sun was setting over that building, over that set. 
they use for Buzz Blast, and I really do dig that quite a fair bit. I like that a lot. I really, really like that a lot. That's a nice attention to the detail they've got there. Anyway, guys, I think that's going to bring this mini discussion, review, podcast, whatever you want to call it, for Power Rangers Dino Fury Episode 7. What did you guys think of the episode? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Tell me in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your opinions and stuff like that. Also, what did you think of my review? Did you think it was a good review? Did you think it wasn't a good review? I'd love to hear some feedback from you guys. With that said, I think I'm going to wrap this video up now. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and don't forget to turn on all notifications. Special thanks to all the members such as Swagger4. If you want to get your name shout out at the end of a video like Swagger4 over here, become a Zord tier member or higher for special perks on the channel such as your name in the credits of every video or even a shout out like I did for Swagger4 at the end of every video. With that said, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Have a wonderful day or night. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.